Ode to a Lost Explorer. This is the fictional travel blog through the procedurally generated universe of No Man's Sky. All content within this audiobook is copyright 2016-2018 Andreas Constantine. All related No Man's Sky logos and intellectual property included in this novelization are owned by Hello Games. Music by 65 Days of Static. Welcome, interlopers, to the fictitious podcast novelization through the procedurally generated universe of No Man's Sky. Chapter 7. Odd Friends. Stranger Acquaintances. I didn't get much sleep till morning, but I seem to have made a friend of the creature, introducing itself as Navigator Kalo. Over breakfast, I learned that my new friend was known as Gek, a bird-like, originally amphibious, mercantile race native to the water planet known as Balron, which was the Gek's homeworld. He He talked a lot. There was no way to tell if it was male or female. Maybe the Gek were neither, just being genderless. All the same, Kalo felt to me like a he, and he didn't seem to mind when I referred to him as such, stating that gender was determined spontaneously by the circumstances, whatever that meant, leaving me just baffled. I did not pursue the topic further. Shuttle, have too many problems. It'll take too long to fix. Limited storage space, Kalo said. We salvage and leave for my ship. Carry what we can. How can we carry everything, I replied. You silly. He crackled into laughter. Look outside. I moved to the front of the ship to take a look out from the canopy. I hadn't noticed anything in the dark of night, but now, in the early daylight, I see a large, bulky vehicle parked right beside my ship. Together, we load everything on the strong Colossus and drive back to Holler. Then we leave Baron Planet. Kayla paused. While he studied me for a moment. Don't think too hard. Trust Kalo. Not safe here. Must go. And soon. Why? What's wrong? I asked. No time to explain now. Later. Now we go. Come. Start with supplies. Then ship parts. It took us till mid-afternoon to load the Colossus, stopping only for a short lunch break on Kalo's insistence, and the orchestral accompaniment of loud grumbling sounds emanating from his belly. The Colossus' name was justified. It had a lot of cargo space, and we managed to fill it up with supplies, parts, and plenty of room to spare. Kalo seemed agitated as the day began to fade. Late. Hurry. We go now. I took one final look as Kalo drove off at the broken shuttle that had been my shelter. It reminded me of the carcass of some fallen beast I had read about, somewhere in my lost childhood. Memories of a beast that had sustained my life, had kept me safe, but had finally succumbed to the ravages of a dead, desolate world collapsing as it gasped for its last breath. Seems like there was a voice, someone reading it to me. Parents, perhaps? My own mind playing tricks, perhaps? I had no recollection of parents. In fact, I had no memory of anyone. We arrived at Kalo's ship before twilight, in a storm of stinging red dust, with visibility limited to the distance between the Colossus and the ship. I could hardly make out anything. We struggled to load everything that we had packed in the hauler, from the external holds and the roof of the Colossus. My protests to wait until morning were rebucked with a frantic waving of hands by Kalo pleading, No time. We go tonight. Kalo's urgency troubled me. I couldn't imagine why he was in such a rush to leave. And tonight, in the midst of a dust storm? A few hours into the planet's night, and we were done loading everything, including the Colossus, with its full hull, but fortunately the storm had settled down to an occasional but annoying waft of dust, dirt, and sand. I couldn't believe we had finished. I was exhausted, hungry, and thirsty. Please, slowly. Don't make a noise. Follow Kalo on to holler. Come. I had no idea what he was talking about. I was beginning to think he'd lost his mind. Maybe I should have stayed and repaired my ship. I was beginning to regret having followed him back here. But it was too late to think of regrets. What was done, was done. I'd have to make the most of it. Following him slowly into the hauler, I found myself in a dark room. Slowly, a faint blue glow from a single panel in the ceiling began to light the hold. Your eminence, please forgive Kalo. Foolish servant am I for taking so long. It was some distance, 
Many things to loan, he said smiling. Supplies were desperately needed, have been found, secured. We now resume mission. Let me introduce... Caleb stopped and turned to me with a look of surprise. I don't know friend's name. F flabbergasted, I looked at the single figure seated in the couch against the back of the ship. As more light panels began to glow, I could see her young face. A female, humanoid, beautiful in every sense. She sat looking up at me and smiled. I replied slowly, I, I don't know my name. Are you a No Man's Sky fan, player, enthusiast, or just enjoy space fiction? Please enjoy this audiobook now, subscribe to the channel, or visit the novelization written by award-winning poet, teacher, and author Andreas Constantine at ode to a lost explorer .wordpress .com. Keep exploring, interlopers.